The Molluscan Hemiseal's Role in Locomotion, presented by Ali Abid, Frederick Lefebvre, Zachary Lynn, and Catherine Tolar. First off, we need to describe what is a mollusk. Many of you have come across a mollusk within your lifetime, and some of you might actually have eaten them. They are a diverse invertebrate phylum that typically has a soft, unsegmented body that is sometimes protected by a shell of some sort. The two most common classes include cephalopods, which include octopi and squid, and gastropods, which include snails. The main difference between these two classes is their circulatory system and complexity. Cephalopods have a closed circulatory system, meaning all the blood is enclosed within the circulatory system, while gastropods, on the other hand, have an open circulatory system, meaning its blood is pumped in, pumped in and diffuses across the body through a hemocele. For this particular presentation, we're going to focus on gastropods and the unique collaboration of the circulatory system and hemocele in gastropod movement. The term hemocele describes the cavity of space between mollusks through which blood circulates and forms a type of hydraulic skeleton. This means that instead of having bones, like humans would, a gastropod's body shape is determined by compression-resisting resi fluid, the most of which is blood due to the nature of the gastropod's open circulatory system. Let's take a closer look at the gastropod's body plan in order to clarify what gastropods actually look like. In the open circulatory system of the gastropod, the blood flows openly into the hemocele. The hydraulic skeleton is then reinforced by the fibers and integrates with the circulatory system in order to move the foot in two distinct gates known as adhesive crawling and loping. The more widely researched and understood gait is adhesive crawling, where the snail moves by a train of periodic muscle contractions or pedal waves. The muscles in the gastropod's foot create a pulse by alternating between contraction and relaxation, and these pulses create a propagation speed referred to as a V-wave. This pulsing activity defines the pedal wave. During locomotion, the propagation speed is greater than the speed of the animal referred to as a V-slug, which is what allows the animal to move forward. This description is clearly depicted in the figure shown on this slide. In adhesive crawling, most of the foot is separated from the surface by a continuous layer of mucus. The mucus produced by the snail provides a viscoelastic characteristic between the gastropod and the surface, and consequently, a net friction is generated that allows the gastropod to propel forward due to the pedal wave mechanisms described earlier. Between two consecutive pedal waves consists a region called the inner waves, and the distance between the two is called the wavelength. The inner wave actually makes up the majority of the area of the gastropod's foot, occupies during locomotion, since the wavelengths are greater than the pedal waves. One study conducted by Janice Lay and her team of scientists studies to further understand the mechanism of gastropod locomotion. This included measuring the crawling speed as a function of the wavelength, as shown in the figure accompanying the slide. There is clearly a positive correlation between the mean wavelength and wavelength frequency with the crawling speed. This led the group to conclude that the number of pedal waves decreased as the animal moved faster, and, mechanistically speaking, this implied that the increased length of the inner waves contributes to a higher propulsive forces needed for the increased crawling speeds. Unfortunately, the studies performed to further understand the mechanistic purpose of the mucus were statistically insignificant. the loping mechanisms of movement, a snail moves by arching regions of the sole forward and dragging the rest of its body along over specific contact points. This leaves a dotted path of mucus as compared to the continuous path left by crawling, because crawling involves a continuous swath of mucus contacts with the substrate, while loping involves only discrete points of contact. The hemocele contributes to this by adding to the rigidity of the foot when it is in contact with the ground. As the snail moves, blood flows into the arteries and veins of the foot, supplying the muscles with oxygen and nutrients, which also increase the turgor of the foot, helping it distribute forces. In our discussion, we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of the different gastropod gates. When it comes to water retention, loping does not lose as much water as adhesive crawling because there is less mucus loss to the substrate in the movement therefore making it more advantageous. 
In regards to speed, however, new research shows that contrary to earlier beliefs, adhesive crawling is faster than loping. Please refer to the following slide. This chart outlines the speed differences mentioned in the earlier slide. As you can see, when looking at the two different gastropod gates, adhesive crawling is faster both in average speed and maximum speed. The next point of comparison will be looking at the limited amount of undesirable contact gastropods have with substrates. Because loping involves fewer points of contact with the substrate, gastropods will typically use this gate if the substrate contains irritating substances such as chemicals and or pesticides. Lastly, we'll be comparing the different trails left behind by gastropods. Since loping leaves behind a dotted trail, it is harder for predators to follow a gastropod's loping trail as opposed to a gastropod's crawling trail, making loping advantageous. The hemoseal and open circulatory system are crucial aspects of the different movement styles of gastropods. But why is this important to us? Gastropod movement has actually become a field of high interest for many engineers and physicists pioneering new robotic designs that mimic the adhesive crawling and loping locomotion of gastropods. As seen in our discussion, loping and adhesive crawling each have their own distinct advantages, and both locomotion styles have been used to discover new mechanisms to more efficiently move robots. Videos of these robots can easily be found online if you Google Biomimetic Snail Locomotion. Work cited.